Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to the weekend recap number five of our official series, where we watched some moments from this past weekend stream on our server with some of my commentary. As always, the server and Discord links are in the description. Also include timestamps for the different tracks in the video, so feel free to jump around if there's any that catch your eye. Today, we're back at the tried and true Lime Rock track. Quickly, if not definitely now, becoming one of my favorites. We're here in the chase position with our friend OTM Reg. As a reminder, number one in, I think it was the ACS server for this track on points anyway. Uh, this was actually really cool to warm up. Uh, you'll see also throughout this video, we have some really cool uh, different time of days that you're gonna be going through. Uh, daytime, evening, sunset, uh, sunrise, and just straight up nighttime. Also, it was crazy. I don't know if you guys noticed on that transition. Uh, basically, Reg is so consistent that there wasn't even any effect I needed to apply uh, to that transition. But yeah, here we're just kind of following him, especially for our warm up, trying to work on proximity. I, I think actually you're going to see near the end of this video, I, I believe we stop at Lime Rock. You'll see actually, I think, uh, quite a big improvement. And uh, I also want to say, you're gonna. I'm gonna make a comment here. I think after this track, we actually switch to villains. Uh, definitely check your settings, man. I'll get into that later. But here you can see, I guess on some of these daytime, nighttime transitions, it goes basically like this track has track lights, but it seems like at some stage before the daytime, the lights just start completely off and it's just kind of pitch black everywhere. I personally really like it. I think it gives a little bit more of a like gritty vibe, I guess, if that makes sense to uh, the track. So I really enjoy uh, driving or I should say drifting at nighttime. I know it's not everyone's uh, cup of tea, I suppose, but it's definitely really fun. I, I really like having this nighttime and the transitions of the different daylight cycles going through. But here, as I mentioned, we are on Villain Sportsland. Now, I was struggling and I couldn't figure out why. It almost felt like I was relearning the track. I was having some really weird uh, feeling, I guess, it, in the in the wheel. I thought it was just me. Well, it turns out my settings got switched from a 90 degrees to 720 degrees. So I hadn't known it at the time. You'll probably see at the bottom right hand side a lot of clipping. That's that uh, gray bar that keeps going red. I think it's a little bit more apparent when we get into Euphoria Hillside, I think is our next track. But here, I'm just trying to stay with Turbo. He was throwing in some crazy, uh, I, I would say maybe almost backies, really consistent, but it's always really fun to, to follow him and try to match that entry angle. I've noticed when I'm following, especially on these kind of bigger entries that I'm a little bit less confident about, I always pull a little bit too much proximity. I end up way too far away. And then I'm just trying to like regain that proximity to whoever I'm chasing. So especially with turbo being a little bit faster of a driver, I really have to be a little bit better on that. So here I am just trying to stay close to him as close as possible right here. Initiating a little bit late though, trying to stay close really, as I've mentioned on our last video, even though you might be losing a little bit of proximity, especially if you're trying to learn a track or just improve a little bit. It's okay to pull a little bit more proximity between or sorry give a little bit more proximity between you and whoever's leading just so that way you can kind of get the lines a little bit uh a little bit better uh, down better i guess is what i'm saying but here you see a big train i think that's a what a, a six stack almost a seven right here losing a little bit proximity trying to match that transition or maybe that entry timing going really wide on the line, but trying to match it the best I can, especially like I always say, when you see four red arrows, so you see two in front, two behind, it's always a little sweaty. So trying my best to not be too greedy on the door in front of me, trying to be consistent as possible. You can still see a little bit of mistakes, but I, I think I genuinely was struggling uh, with the weird change in the wheel. At least I think it was on villains because I, I remember thinking to myself like, man, why is this feeling so crazy? But here looking, losing a ton of proximity, showing up a little bit on the entry, but still trying to stay smooth, trying to follow his lines as well. I've mentioned before when you're I've seen at least and even myself when you're trying to cut in 
and pull into that proximity, get a lot closer to the door. People will try to go a little bit too shallow. So I'm trying to still be chaseable, but recoup some of that. And, and really the problem there, you know, once you lose that proximity, you, you're kind of putting a lot of people in a deficit, right? So they have to go a lot more shallow. And eventually the person in the very back is basically straight, straight lining it. But we now find ourselves at Euphoria Hillside. So this is where I think for me that weird setting in the wheel uh, really became a lot more apparent for me. You can see actually quite often here at the bottom right at 720 degrees of angle, I was not used to. You can see a lot more cautious. I am in the middle of this train, just trying to follow, but it's always hard for me. I'm always just assuming that it's a me issue, not a car or settings issue. So if you're watching this, uh, definitely double check your settings. If things don't feel right, I, I don't know how that changed. I mean, maybe it was a misclick. I, I have no idea, but definitely just double check. It's kind of the same thing maybe as like doing a bolt check before, uh, before an event, but yeah, here, not my greatest uh, footage of like this track. I think last weekend's footage was, was really good. I had some really good runs with Turbo, but in the meantime, as I'm kind of like fighting these issues, you can see here I'm just pulling, or at least putting in a little bit more proximity between me and mods that's in front of me and just trying to make sure that I'm not ruining the train here too. And I thought it was cool, at least with uh, these footages. So I have two runs from Euphoria. I just kind of wanted to show maybe more runs that aren't exactly perfect, but the way that you can kind of come back, even if you make mistakes and especially if you're in a lobby with people that you've driven with uh, for a little bit that you're comfortable with, that you don't necessarily have to reset all the time, it makes it a little bit more engaging and you can stay in the train. And honestly, with the Florida Hillside, it's such a long track. You don't, at least I, I personally don't want to reset because I have to wait so long for the train to come back. But here you can see Turbo, as always, throwing a great lead, foul. And then, uh, yeah, we have quite a few people behind us. This track, I think, is still a little bit uh hard for me i'm not really happy with my consistency definitely the wheel having those settings chains probably didn't help and that was another thing too i come actually from uh from car x as i mentioned before but with the set of course uh, i'm almost thinking to myself like maybe for a, a new driver in car x i would say hey yeah go to 720 it's a little bit easier to learn maybe 540 but after driving on 720 it, it could just be because i'm so used to 900 it just felt so bad so i'm not sure if really have any advice but that's just some of my feedback but here as we're going trying to stay off my left foot uh, as much as i can you can see how much again proximity proximity i'm losing but it's just really rough again <laughs> like it's, it's kind of hard to watch back to be honest but yeah i'm just trying to stay engaged with the train without making too big of adjustments especially because I do have someone behind me. Obviously, I have no idea when I'm driving, you know, how many people are behind me. But when I see one red arrow, I try to step it up, try to stay smooth, consistent, even if I am losing that proximity, just to make sure people behind me, uh, you know, are not having a hard time with the chase. And here, pulling in a little bit of that proximity, going on a more shallow angle. You're making a lot of mistakes. You can see me actually like visibly fighting with the wheel, recovering here, thankfully. Uh, again, because it is like more of a, a couple of drivers that I, I'm a little bit more accustomed to driving with. Uh, I don't feel as pressured to hit that reset as quick. Maybe for better, for worse. Maybe people watching this are like, hey, man, I wish you would reset, though. But here, like you can see, I think the nighttime adds such a different dimension to this track. I think a lot of tracks in general, actually, adds a, a lot bigger of a dimension to the track itself. If that makes sense, it feels a lot different. I would say it feels more gritty, like I said, at Lime Rock, but I was driving so poorly, I was just trying to stay with it as much as possible. And there's one thing that I actually just noticed that I, I've been wanting to call out a little bit in a lot of these videos. One habit that I noticed, uh, I don't know if it came from CarX, I did watch actually some IRL videos of me way back in the day. At least it feels like a forever ago. But when you're in these trains or when you're in a tandem, uh, I'll try to point out next time I see it, but sometimes like adding a little bit more angle uh, right before you transition and then transitioning, that will actually hurt you with proximity and just 
in general like following on pro uh on the right line so i'll try to call it out next time i see it but we're actually moving to a new track i've never drifted on shout out to otm for this recommendation it's ht drift park so this is actually from the same creators of uh, rhythm and flow has a pretty cool track layout right here a very unique little carousel i guess so you kind of go on the outside i'm not totally positive about these lines if i'm being honest with you guys so I'm still learning, but it did seem like I could take this outside line, then go here, go a little bit middle into the inside. And then I think out here, we want to go full outside. Ooh, that's a little bit rough. Again, this is actually my first time driving this track. Uh, shallow, shallow, inside corner, all the way extension is a little bit long of a line there. Go inside corner and you want to be about mid or inside line i have been trying to mess around with that i'm not totally you know confident that's the right line or not here you kind of want to keep your momentum this is really interesting right here this uphill is kind of gnarly it doesn't look like that but when you're driving it, it it's really weird it, it kind of cuts your speed but at the same time you end up running right at that wall so it makes you a little bit nervous so yeah like this i think was only a couple runs in you know there's some trains around us unfortunately there wasn't any track uh, camera setup for this track so we have this overhead but i think it's actually a little bit unique you can kind of see the lines and how the train as a whole is reacting even though it's not as photogenic it's a little bit nice to see i think here in a couple seconds we're going to be switching to a train view so let's see here yeah so here i'm pretty far in the pack just trying to follow see what lines other people are taking as i mentioned if you're not sure about the lines it's always a good idea to jump behind some people who look like they're really consistent having consistent lines to just kind of learn it here you can see how gnarly that uphill looks a little bit on that track him if you're looking at that there here really struggling a lot of late transitions for me again we talk about proximity keeping your proximity those transition timings are really important you want to transition almost it almost feels a little bit early and so right as they're transitioning when their car is in more of a like facing noon right so it's in a i guess a, it almost looks like a non-drip like right here right you want to be matching it almost bumper to bumper but as i'm kind of learning the track and struggling a little bit try not to mess up too much you can kind of see that here because i think a little bit near i want to say the end I have quite a few people behind me and you can see the line that I took was a lot different than what they were expecting and it caused an extreme amount of bunch up. I mean, this camera really illuminates all of the problems and you could see like the different angles that people are taking in the lines as well. If you're kind of looking up at the top here uh, and a lot of like you see that bunching is me not really being consistent with my throttle or arguably the lines. You can see right there adjusting a little bit heavy on my angle that caused the car right behind me to also have to adjust. And then again, anytime you do anything in a train, it's a kind of a dominoes effect. And I'd even argue the guy, I think it was two cars behind me, ended up having to fully reset because of a lot of my mistakes. So I don't know how I didn't uh, get pushed out of this lobby with this driving. It's kind of rough, but it's a fun track. I think I said that about every track. Shout out to OTM for, for showing us that. We are now to Ebisu North Course. So this was a a crazy track during night times with the as i mentioned like at some points it seems like the tracks just turn off their lights and it's kind of pitch black it's really crazy to drive during that it's kind of challenging but i thought that a lot of the sunrise and the sunsets were so photogenic i mean it looks really good even watching it back but definitely driving it felt really immersive you know me and, and my immersion that's all i ever talk about but here i'm really trying to focus on keeping with that proximity on the initiation and then also the transitions on that long straight. I think I am getting a little bit better at it, but it really comes down to that transition timing and also keeping up speed. I think during this session, we had a couple people who were jumping in maybe in the mid or like front of the train that were struggling with the speed. And if they're struggling with the speed, it generates this huge pocket, uh, this huge gap. And then, you know, we're all kind of struggling behind that too. So I don't think it's unique to me, but it's something I'm still trying to work on. Here again, trying to keep that proximity, probably not taking the best lines possible, but really just trying to stick as close as I can. Definitely again, when you see turbo in the lead, you know you have to actually be on your throttle as much as possible. He's not gonna give you any chance to slow it down. He's just gonna go full speed. I definitely think that's where his name came from, but who knows? Who knows, man? Probably, we, 
apparently there's uh, some lore, some uh, old school lore with Turbo and his 10,000 plus hours. So it's probably something like that. I got to ask him sometime. I got to ask him. But here again, trying to stay really close, not really confident, but I was able to transition, I think kind of on time, a little bit late on that transition. And then right here, making a huge mistake, but trying to correct, trying to be smooth with the correction. And you can see the two cars behind me actually doing okay with that correction. And also we're here at a sunset. So I think there is a few track lights on here and there. But again, I just feel like the different day cycles give such a unique feeling to these tracks. So here's another one that actually is called Sika Hills. Sika Hills, one of those two. Uh, I actually was really struggling on this track. I really love Perma's tracks. I think they look so good, but they're really technical. They're actually really uh, a, a lot more technical than I'm typically used to, I think. So I'm still challenging myself. But this track definitely is starting to kind of become one of my more favorite tracks, more favorite tracks. And let's talk about the lines here because it's kind of a unique track in that sense. So here we're going to go inside to our outside. Now this, it seems like everyone takes a little bit different. Here I like to do a little bit of a manji. I know some people hate that, but here initiation. You can hear me struggling with the gear ratio, I think, later in this uh, session on this track, I was messing around with it a little bit more. Now, OTM has a unique line that I wasn't used to where you see there we cut in the inside. A lot of the times we've ran this before, we go onto that first outside zone instead of the cut into the left. But here, e-braking, getting a little bit of that angle here, scrubbing a little bit of speed. Here, you can kind of just use uh, really the body weight of the car. You don't really have to e-brake. But I do see this track, I feel like, takes a lot of the e-brake into play. So if you're not using an e-brake, maybe you could do a little bit of left foot braking, maybe clutch work. But it's still, a, again, it's a challenging track. So anytime you have more tools that you can use, such as an e-brake, use them. Uh, but you want to try to be smooth with it. So here, let's talk about our follow. So I'm trying to stay close to him. And also, I can never read his name on the playback, but I think it's A to Z. Shout out to A to Z. I've drifted with him a couple times now. But I'm not really aware of what lines he's going to take. So I'm kind of trying to fill it out, but I'm, I'm really trying to push myself again. I feel like I'm lacking a lot with the proximity. So I'm really trying to push into that. E-brake here, taking the inside to the outside. It was a little bit more midline, which I wasn't expecting, which we saw a little bit of contact there. Then here, initiation. He's going to go on that right-hand side where I was a little bit more shallow on our last run that we saw. And then all the way outside, which I was not used to, but trying to adapt to what he's doing, takes this line here. If you hit it correctly, I think you'll kind of understand what that line feels like. You're not going to slow as, uh, up as much. It's going to feel a lot more fluid. And then here, what I've been doing is right at the tires, boom, e-brake a little bit late, I think, actually. Typically, want to fill the outside zone, but I think he's going more midline here. And then again, go outside zone. You got to really trust your car. I think it's going to depend on the pack, but you want to kind of trust your car and throwing that weight in and then here e-braking and again we we now go to night and actually like i mentioned before i think it's about like sunrise ish but it looks definitely super dark i mean watching this back right now it's, it's almost hard to see anything but we're also hitting some pretty big uh big angle but here trying to follow his line i got two red arrows behind me a little bit late on the transition sticking with him through here and then again, as I mentioned, it's really hard to see, right? We don't have much light, but we're going to be e-braking right, I think, a little bit after the tires. And, and again, I'm trying to match his angle. I'm making a little bit of mistakes, but I'm trying to match the angle that he's throwing in. Really, this track has a lot of tight corners, especially that one we just came out of. So it's easy to start bunching and hitting uh, people because you're trying to pull proximity and not following their actual uh, angle that they're throwing. But here we are now on our Saturday at good old shadow valley at night some really cool vibes on shadow valley i really like uh the track lights that are around except there is that really big outside corner that has no lighting at all so it can be a little bit intimidating but definitely might uh might want to turn on some some of your lights i also want to just know like if you are driving at night i mean it's not it's not a big deal but I would recommend if you're in a train, not the lead and anywhere beyond that. So let's say like second, third, all the way, to, you know, however long the train is, try to set your low beams instead of your high beams. You have your high beams, you're going to be flashing the person in front of you every time you transition. Kind of one of those just like, you know, to be nice for other drivers type of deal. It's not, it's not a huge thing, but I just wanted to call that out. 
I don't think a lot of people will even think about it, but I always try to make a conscious effort, especially at night, to turn on just my low beams, unless I'm leading. Even on my lead sometimes, just for aesthetics, I guess. I do like to just have my low beams on though too. But here we are following Yasko. So throughout the day and night, or throughout the night and day, I should say, just trying to follow his lines. I think he's definitely a lot more comfortable with this track now. So every time I see him on Shadow Valley, always really good, consistent lines. I'm really trying to focus on my transition timing. You can hopefully notice losing a little bit of proximity, but also trying to match his lines as well and not have too much of an adjustment because there's really not much adjustment needed. Also really like that track's warm up. Here's a new track that is new for the series, but not new for most of you. And actually this was my first track I ever drifted on a Seto. Uh, we are on Drift Playground. I'm sure most of you guys know that. I thought that this was a pretty good beginner track when I started. I think maybe reading online or some videos and stuff, it seemed like the track that people recommended. I don't know if I actually would recommend this as a starter track. I think maybe some of the veterans in a setto would argue, hey man, you gotta just go out there and do it. But there's a lot of elevation changes, um, really unique spots that are a little bit tight of corners. For someone that's maybe new, I'm not too sure if I'd recommend it, but it is a track that I started out and, and actually learned myself on. But let's talk about the line. So here we're going to be coming over to where the track basically starts. Oh, a little bit of lag. So right here, transition outside fully. You should be able to outside fully here. And then I think you want to be outside midline. I think more midline here. And then outside full should be able to run this if you can keep your uh, consistent speed or be consistent on your speed. Here, I'm not too sure. I think it's going to be mostly mid or outside line. I would not recommend doing what I did and e-braking there. Uh, this seems like an inside, inside, kind of like a manji. And then this section, I've seen all the way out, but I've also seen this more mid inside line. Then to, I think again, a little bit of a manji basically onto an outside. I think you want to actually be more mid inside line here to the inside mid line here. And then this, I believe you could take all the way out yeah, I'm struggling a little bit on the line. I think I was still trying to test out what made sense or not. And that's what I've always recommended too. Like if you're new to a track, definitely like try out different lines, see what makes the most sense. Especially if you have some good drivers behind you, you're, you're going to be able to get some feedback of, hey, that's not a great line, man. Like <laughs> don't, don't run that line. We're bunching back here, right? But now we are actually on a follow. We have Reg in front of us with R and Turbo. All good drivers. So it's good practice for me. I think, again, I haven't really, if ever, I think, drifted a, a train on this track. So I'm just trying to learn, see what lines they're taking, not trying to take too many risks, keeping a little bit of proximity gap, just in case, just as I'm learning here. And really, this is what I talk about and I've talked about before, your active chases. So you're not just, oh, man, I want to get on that door. You're thinking about the lines that they're taking, how the two cars behind the leader reacting. I mean, this is a great situation to be in where you're in... in excuse me, inside the middle of the train. So you can see the lines that the lead is taking, but you can also see the effects of the line that the lead is taking is having, right? So we could see OTM or R bunch up in certain situations or, hey, you know, it's a really good line and it feels, uh, you know, good following them. So here, a little bit of lag. Uh, it looks like Turbo's fighting the internet demons. I think, I think if I remember correctly, he said... I was going to apologize about the lag, but it's not really me. So it is, <laughs> it's, which is so real, dude. I mean, that happens to me sometimes. It's just so frustrating when it's uh, internet issues. But again, we're in our third position. I'm just trying to see, especially now with Reg in the lead, Turbo in the chase, just trying to see what Reg may, might be doing a little bit differently. There you can see really late transition. Um, I'm trying to focus a little bit on those transitions where it seems like I'm a little late. I think if you watch this back, it's hard to catch it when it happens, but anytime it seems like there's a lot of proximity gap, it's either A, because of a late transition, or B, a late transition because I'm adding a little bit of extra angle before I go into that transition. But now we're back at rhythm and flow. So actually we drove, I, I'm sure he probably has more maps, but both of the maps, I wish I could remember the creator off the top of my head, but I know it's HT is the abbreviation. Turbo on the lead, so you know we have to be on the throttle. Being a little bit on the left foot gas, uh, left foot brake, excuse me, but not a ton. Want to make sure I'm 
pulling momentum up this little uphill section, matching his transition timing. I also noticed too, like depending on the driver that you're chasing, some of them might not actually throw as much angle as you would be expecting. I think maybe I could argue turbo in a sense in some situations is like that. Definitely not every, I think his entries are mad. I think we're about to see one right here. We'll see. We're about to cut to a, another section. Okay, now he's way in front of us. But here, making a huge mistake, trying to recover on it. No one was behind me, so I didn't sweat it too much. We are position number... What is that? Wow, yeah, six. So position six with two drivers behind us, an eight-person train, pretty crazy. Trying to stay behind him. Not doing anything too crazy back here. A little bit late on the transition timing, but not too bad, not too bad. Yeah, sticking with them here. I think really like one thing I just mentioned that I was actively thinking about when I was driving is not throwing more angle than is really being thrown by the person in front of me. That's one thing I've started to notice and pick up on that is going to end up uh, hurting me as far as staying in that proximity. And there you saw a little bit of the a little bit of a tap on his bumper. I was trying really hard to stay consistent, but it was a little bit rough. Here we're on a, a brand new map I've never seen or driven. I think it's literally called Fortnite. For those that have played Fortnite, uh, maybe this looks familiar. I've never played Fortnite, if you can imagine that. I mean, I feel like that's kind of crazy, actually, now that I said it out loud. But uh, yeah, this was a, a pretty interesting track. I, I, the jury's still out if this is a fun track or not. I think the, the little line markers are kind of confusing. Before these uh, clips that we're watching, basically, I was running, or sorry, the server and I were running it the other direction. I think after a little bit of testing, it did seem like this direction felt better for the majority of the, of the lobby. I do think some people said the other way felt better, but I don't know if I really have a hard preference there. I felt like I was just struggling on this track so much that uh, I don't really have a hard preference there. So let's talk about the lines. If this is something that you want to drive maybe it'll be helpful here so you could either go straight or you can go in this left section so we're going to go in this left section on this part inside zone you want to kind of go a little bit inside line to mid i guess outside holding the corner or sorry hugging the corner there i keep my eyes keep going towards those zones so you can kind of see me change my car into those zones sometimes Really this, like you should be able to hold one consistent angle. I think my gearing I was still struggling with here too. I wasn't really sure what gearing I needed either. It's kind of all brand new to me. Here, basically running all the outside. You can see it too. I mean, I thought it was interesting. I thought it'd be, I thought it'd be good for people to see like, I, you know, I'm not one of those people who can jump on a track and just run it perfectly. It does take me a little bit of time, I think. On, on average, a new track for me will take at least an hour to feel comfortable or let's say confident with the lines. But here, just trying to really just get a drift down. I, I don't even think I was really super focused on the lines here. Just trying to stay on the outside, remain in drift, pulling a little bit on the inside, going to the outside here. And I think here is a more of a mid inside line. And then I think we're going to be transitioning actually to a chase. So we're going to see how Professor and A to Z, man, I swear I can never see his name properly, uh, take this track. So here making a little bit of a mistake, trying not to make too many corrections, but just struggling, trying to stay in that proximity at least enough that I can understand the lines. So we'll see here Professor going mid to outside. And you can see basically he's holding that outside line. You don't really see much change in his angle or anything like that. I mean, that's that's textbook. That looks so good. That's, that's basically what I was trying to do, okay? Not doing well, but trying to. Here, trying to stay close to his door. Professor running that outside line again. All the way out. Cutting in a little bit here. I think he goes outside. Yep, outside here, cutting in a little bit early to make this corner. And as I mentioned, I think this actually would be a good point to say, you know, you're, you enter, let's say, into a corner, you exit into a corner. That exit of that corner is going to set you up for the entrance of the next corner, right? 
So this is a really good track, I think, for that example, where every exit of every corner, I think, actually matters quite a bit. And it can really affect the, tra the trajectory. Ooh, big word. Uh, for how your, your drift is going to be. So I think we have one more follow. Every uh, new track, I try to be two chase or sorry two leads two chases just so we can kind of fully see it so here we have professor right in front of me i make a massive correction trying to stick with him you can see people behind me struggling because i'm struggling professor going a little bit more on the inside line this time more midline here and then we'll see if he's actually going to be holding his angle a, a little bit of slight of correction i think uh, it's a little challenging because it's almost like a blind not a hill but corner and it's really just high speed i think if we drifted this track a little bit more i think we'd be all a little bit more comfortable and being able to to know the parts that you just kind of have to send it and throttle in but here just because i think we're all just trying to figure out the lines at least again i i was this is a new track for me wasn't really too sure and confident to be able to just stay in throttle and when i did you know i'd just definitely be hitting uh hitting walls but again professor taking the middle and I would say most of these lines are probably like more middle corners, not really super outside, super inside. Here you do have to kind of be outside, as you can see, to really extend that drift all the way out. And then I think Professor goes outside to a mid line. Oh, and we cut right there. A little bit rough of a cut, but we are now over to Ebisu Minami. I think I'm saying that correctly. This track has always been an extreme challenge for me. I've drifted this track on gravy garage wdts and actually swarm v1 never really felt like i was getting it down but this time i felt like i was finally starting to get things that were clicking here is a great example of something that i've explained a couple times in this video but also in previous videos where you don't have to be on people's door to learn i'm leaving quite a big gap just so i can learn the lines that they're taking and i really don't want to mess them up so you'll see me just change the lines that i'm taking Honestly, just to make sure I'm not uh, making any issue for the people in front of me. Here again, I'm trying to chase them. Follow the lines that they're creating. The jump area, and maybe I'll explain that in a, the next run. It, there's a certain line that I think you want to take on that. But the rest of the track is kind of straightforward. So here, kind of like a big, long manji. I think for me, I like to go on the outside of this zone maybe not as far as fresh did that is pretty far out there but enough to fully connect this try not to cut this a little bit too hard i think a lot of people do and it messes up people behind them and then here so you want to basically straighten up i really would want to manji this but i don't have enough speed and then you want to aim for that ends kind of where those uh tires are set up there and aim for that area and get a little bit of uh angle off the drift or off the jump i guess you would say to be able to just be right in that drift and in the right angle that you want to be in, if that makes sense. So here, we're going to see, I think we have one more run on Minami. I almost feel like I maybe should have put more clips in here to, to talk about it, because there is so much to unpack with this track, but basically here, taking like this mid to outside line-ish, I'm following Reg here, straightening up, looking for that left side right here where he's entering, perfect. And then struggling a little bit, pulling the e-brake to get my car right back in drift, trying to hold that proximity with him without actually hitting him at all, and trying to keep that angle, especially because I saw that there were people behind me. So I wasn't feeling super confident on this track, but I was trying to be as close to proximity and match his lines as much as I possibly could. And again, like this track was really cool. I I, I don't know if it's uh, just the Japanese tracks or what, but they look so nice on uh evening and or i guess sunset sunrise situations here's a another actually very unique track i don't think i've seen this uh, anywhere actually this is higashi fuji i hope i'm saying that right i almost want to refer to this as a mini toe so it's crazy that there's so many people behind me this was a track i think we spent actually about an hour hour and a half on Kind of unique on how you can take the corners. You can see the train is probably struggling because I'm not sure what the lines were. With the night rotation, especially this track, it gets really dark, hard to see. So most of this practice was at pitch dark when I first started learning this track. But once it started getting a little bit light on the track, a little bit more confident. So let's talk about the lines here. 
I'm gonna go inside to kind of a inside outside line here aiming for that wall now trying to stay on this little track you can see the white line to our right i'm trying to stay within there you know you can hug this it feels like that you can hug that section and then also hug this too i'm not sure i mean looking at it it doesn't have like a track cam but we do have our nice little overhead cam you can kind of see actually maybe the line's a little bit better now i'm not taking the lines that i think most people were and we're going to see that right here so now let's try to watch my lines compared to what the rest of the train is going to be taking i think a lot of the otm boys have driven i think a decent amount on this track I, it's really unconfirmed but they look pretty solid on this so here taking uh that inside white line and then more of this inside line facing the wall and then here if you look at the top camera you can see they're actually running the outside line no problem so i think that's just a me issue here trying to go a little bit on the inside to mid to inside and maybe actually that's some piece i should call out and then here depends who you're following i think they go a little bit more like mid to outside just so you can extend that drift out so let's see i'm gonna look at the top cam now so we want to hug that inside line or that white line not cross it and definitely there's cross traffic here so you want to be careful and not cross that line or else you're going to end up hitting each other taking an outside line struggling a little bit outside pulling on an inside because i'm losing proximity staying within these white lines a little bit of manji then right here i feel like you want to go and right there on that inside sets you up pretty nice for this outside section here and it's crazy watching the the night and day transitions are just so cool to see especially this track it feels really like a tight toe track actually maybe not the best drifting ever but i think it's reasonable when you're losing uh sorry learning new tracks it's not going to be the most beautiful drift but the more you uh get the seat time on these tracks i think myself included obviously the more uh you improve on it too so here again going for that inside spot i think i felt like i was in a good groove there kind of running the white line all the way to this outside zone and then i think most of the time i'm looking at this top camera now just kind of focusing on that a little bit late on the transition staying on the inside to inside then right here again you can kind of start seeing a common pattern for the way i was driving going on the inside white line to the inside concrete barrier and then here taking more of like a mid line ish i would say transition staying right on that white line on the inside i'm looking for this inside position that sets me up good for the outside so here i mentioned it early in the video our final track is lime rock now after all of these sessions and and really like having a little bit more focus on the proximity and because i'm a lot more familiar with this track i was really 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 trying to focus on the proximity i had actually a lot of good runs with foul who we're watching now uh and turbo as well and it i think it had a couple things that clicked for me the car started to come uh a little bit better come into fruition i'm not sure <laughs> where i was going with that sentence to be honest but felt like it was uh clicking a little bit more with me and then especially on this track following people like foul and turbo I have really consistent lines and uh really able to focus on my transition timing it's still a little bit late here you can see here and there but I've, I've really been enjoying this track allowing some time for me to focus on the transition timing i swear there were better better uh clips i mean there was clips where we were just door to door but i think i wanted to shed some light and give some screen time to our homies in the train but yeah a little bit shorter of a video today i kind of feel like i speed ran it i didn't mean to i was just kind of enjoying it and vibing hope you guys all had a great week i will see you this weekend uh, stay tuned for the next in our series, number six. And I think there's going to be some new things coming out, so stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Later.